I'm Showbiz Shelley, hanging out with two people. I am thrilled to be here with Kevin Costner, Anthony Mackie from the movie Black or White. Welcome, you guys, to V96. What's up, Shelley? What's going on? Miss Kevin, Co you're sitting next to a legend. Do you feel like that? Yes. I feel like that, too. <laughs> like I'm standing across from a legend. Is that weird when people say that? I, well, no, I, I don't know how it happens. I, you know, I was... I, you know, I was I was telling Anthony I'm going to be 60 years old in about two days and two three days, and I don't know how I still feel 20. Really? You know, and I've loved making a life in the movies. Yeah. It's, it's just how it happens, and uh, you know, it just happens. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things people can call you. That that's not a bad one. Right. There's a lot of things you can be called. So I wouldn't take offense to that there's one. There's a lot of things I can say. Yeah, and we'll talk about your birthday too in a second. But let's talk about this movie, Black or White, in theaters, January 30th. Right. Now, like I said, when you walked in, it made me cry, first off. I mean, like the initial scenes too. Like you go in and you just like start bawling. So right. first of all, what was it? And I mean, of course, Kevin, you're a producer on this one too. What was it about this script that was appealing to you that made you want to do this I think the same thing that for Anthony. You know, we, we're, we're always on the hunt for the great movie. We're always mm -hmm. on the hunt for the movie that can live forever. That sounds a little lofty, but it's not. I mean, you want to make your work matter. And, and movies, when they're at their very best, can be about things you never, ever forget. And, and I think that's why, that's why people still go to the movies because they think that's possible. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can happen with a big movie and sometimes it can happen with a little movie. And we think that we think we did that. We thought we had a chance with black or white. That's why we both stopped what we were doing to go make it. Okay. And when it was all over, we felt like, uh, in a way, uh, like you just did, there was moment and the movie made us cry as men on some level when we read it, because we know we're living this time. We know we're living what's going on in this world. And, and when you said that that affected you, that's really kind of what we, uh, what we were kind of hoping for. Yeah, and like you said, it is very relevant to everything going on. I'm sure, of course, maybe not at the time when you were filming it, but um, why don't you give people sort of a little insight into what the story is even about? It's a really interesting story, and it's based on a true events as well? Well, it's based on uh, Mike uh, Binder, uh -huh. his, his sister. Yeah, it was his sister. Yeah, his sister had a, uh, a mixed-race uh, baby, uh -huh. and um, he went and helped, took the little girl in, took his sister in and helped raise this um this little boy, it was a little boy. Okay. And everybody kept pressuring the kid to say, if you're black or if you're white or what are you? And the kid was like, I'm just me, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think um, one of the great things about this movie is it really brings up the importance of the future. And you look at kids and, you know, kids are blank slates mm -hmm. and they come out undamaged goods. And it's our job to mess that up. So I feel like we have to allow them to grow up to be the amazing people they're going to be. And that's why, you know, this country's changed so much. And that's why we've gotten better as a generation. Wow. Yeah, that's that's great stuff. Yeah, you're yeah. right about that. And so getting to be a part of it, and of course, a very talented little girl, yeah. isn't it, with you guys as well, Jillian, right? Yeah. Now, I mean, getting to work with her, was it was she just as cute on set as she's Well, listen, you know, it, it, there, yeah, she's cute. But, you know, there's a lot of cute kids and there's you know, a lot of handsome guys, or a lot of beautiful uh -huh. women. but. There's this thing called acting. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and our movie was really dependent on her being You're good. right. Okay, so if she doesn't work, then it doesn't. Then it's not going to work for the audience. Mm -hmm. I mean, really what people are hoping when they go to the theater is that they're going to see themselves in people. Maybe hope, glad they're not in the situations that the people they're watching on, on the film are in. But they, they want to know that something real is happening. And that little girl was able to be real, not just cute. Yeah, she was. It was. She really does. She makes the movie. And um, so let's go back for a second, Kevin. You have so many movies under. I mean, do you have? I mean, looking back, let me see here. I mean, everything Silverado, The Untouchables here in Chicago, yeah. Field of Dreams. I actually went to the actual Field of Dreams several several years ago. That was really cool. And then um, The Bodyguard. I mean, thinking back on your career, is there any moment in particular, any movie? Like, what do you think of when you think back on? Well, no, the, the probably done? the best thing for me is if if somebody's going to talk to me about. Uh, a film it, my career doesn't boil down to a single film yeah i'm glad about that i'm you know i, I so, so if something comes out of somebody's mouth it could be one of 10 of those yeah. films and and i kind of like that and it t and it tells you something that that people are seeing different things they're feeling different things and uh you know i'm lucky i've been able to make a life in the in the movies well, the thing that's so cool, too, is you didn't really have any formal training, right? You didn't really go to school. Really well, no, I, I, it, it didn't start out that way. But once I knew what I wanted to do, I began to train. I began to flex. I began to watch. I uh -huh. began to take classes. I didn't, you know, I realized that I didn't have skill. 
I think Anthony really had a background where he, you know, yeah. uh, where he was able to to build on that, and and I needed to build. And things didn't happen for me until I was about 28 years old. But once I knew what I wanted to do, I enjoyed that process of learning. And you mm-hmm. were kind of like behind the scenes beforehand, right? You did sort of. Yeah, well, I you have that. to make a living. You and yeah. it's like what you do, you scrabble, you, you scramble. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, coming out of university, I, my job as a stage manager made three dollars and fifty cents an hour. So, <laughs> you know, my other friends were working on their second house coming out of college. So, right. you know, those, <laughs> you know, Christmas time and New Year's time, and you're having all these parties, and you're driving home, and you're thinking, wow, these guys are getting their second house, and you can't afford one. You wonder what you're doing. But my aim was true. I knew what I was about. I knew what my heartbeat was telling me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad, uh, you know, 30 years later to, to be able to say that it worked for me. Yeah. Now, going back to black or white for a second, you guys have some pretty intense scenes together, in particular in a courtroom. Was right. that tough to do those and sort of yelling at each other and getting at each other? Or uh, It wasn't. I mean, no? I think the great thing about this movie is the script. And the script really put us in a position to be able to fly with these words and believe what we were saying. Yeah. Um, so... You know, at first it was very intimidating because you walk on set and it's like, oh, it's good. It's Ellie and us. Oh, right? you know, then, <laughs> then, you know, once you get to know Kevin and Octavia and talk to them, you realize that they aren't the type of people that are held up on past success. Mm-hmm. They're all about the moment and they live in today and they're looking for future success. Yeah. So it kind of takes all of that off the table. Yeah. And uh, it gives you as an actor the freedom to kind of go at them and play with them. I mean, uh, you know, we we play. Uh-huh. That's our jobs. Uh-huh. So it gives us it, it gave me the freedom to pl- play. So I felt like there were no limitations on what I could do because of the people's around me success. Yeah. And you know what? Speaking of which, so I thought of you guys, actually, there was a study that just came out where they polled people and they said, what are the more stressful jobs? Well, two of them, broadcasting and acting are two of the top 10 stressful jobs. Would you guys say it gets stressful it seems like it can be, right? Well, when you have something important to say, one of the things that comes in your mind is that means that you're the only person that can wreck it. And, yeah. and Anthony had a couple moments where he could speak for not only himself, but for a lot of people. Right. When he when he said, you're a walking cliche, I, I could feel the power in Anthony because he was speaking to, he was speaking for a lot of people. Yeah. And, and, and we... You know, movies can be about a lot of things. We've talked about it. Comedy, they can be about falling in love. Mm-hmm. You know, they can be about political thrillers. They can be about history. But sometimes they can be about the moment you're living in and, and a thing that you always wanted to say and you didn't know how to say it. And the beauty of our business is we get to work with great writers who once in a while articulate in what we feel in our heart, but they, they are able to put it on a page. Yeah. And, they be, and then what happens is you find the perfect person with the amount of power and the, and the high level of understanding of delivering those lines. And those lines are going to live forever coming out of Anthony's mouth. And there's probably a thing going, I was, the, I can say right now, Anthony was the right guy to say it, mm-hmm. the right amount of authority, the right amount of acting skill. But he also has this, you know, the presence. And, and so this, he'll go on and make these big movies, but he's always going to have black or white. Yeah. And there's a power in it. And you, sometimes you get to speak for a generation. And I think he did. Absolutely. And is it true, too, Kevin, that you have trouble memorizing lines? Well, I, I, I can memorize probably as well as anybody. My problem is I can't perform the next day. A lot of people can memorize <laughs> and turn oh. around and perform. That I have to uh-huh. live with things two or three weeks in order to act. Okay. Because, you know, it, it, for, for me, we each have to find our style, and it's not natural. Yeah. I, I have to work really hard at acting. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, it just comes naturally to it does not. <laughs> it is a it's a process that I have to really work at. But I'm I try not to let anybody else see that. Okay. Right. You know, I have to do my work before I mean this is all boring talk on the radio, but, <laughs> but I I have to go work really hard at night in order to be ready. You know, and weeks ahead. It's true. No, my co host, he can come up with something like this off the top of his head. It would take I me can three improv, weeks to come I can up. improv. Yeah. Anthony can improv. But I've always found yeah. the best time to be able to do that is when you're absolutely prepared. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. When I'm right. prepared, I can do I can. anything. Agreed. So what are you doing for your birthday, by the way? It's coming up, right? I, I think my friends are forcing me into a party. There's people <laughs> that love me, which is a good 
good place yes, to be. Yes, of course. I, I, when they asked what I wanted to do, I said, please, nothing. But it, <laughs> the people that love you, they're just not going to let it happen. Okay, so maybe a party or something, dinner. We're going to have something. Okay, and with the family, too, of course. We'll do something uh, well, of sure. course. Yeah. And, Anthony, you have, of course, Captain America sequel coming out. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We start shooting in April, so it's going to be a lot of flying and fighting for about five months. Not bad. That no, sounds fun. I'm not fun. mad at all. I'm not <laughs> mad at all. Where are you going to make uh, it? Puerto Rico, Berlin, and uh, Atlanta. Also not bad. Yeah. Puerto Rico's going to work for this guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Do you guys get to spend any time in Chicago while you're here or just a day? That's I it. get the day. He's I'm here. I'm going to hang. I'm going to hang through the weekend. Good. I like it here. Good. Yeah. Anything you're going to do that's fine? That's... Um, I don't know. I have, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get through this because black or white was important to us. It really was. Mm -hmm. You know, we, like I say, we'll have a chance to make a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I believe in the audience. And because I believe so much in it, that's why I picked this movie, because I felt it was for people. Okay. And so, you know, right now my my aim is true. My mind is on the game of what we're doing, you know. And, you, you know, you get on the radio, people are driving. They're going, oh, these guys are out there hawking their movie. It's true. <laughs> we it's are. Great we, we, we made a movie. We made it for people. <laughs> We made it for people to share. And so when this day's over, I me mean, trying to, you know, at least get that word out because yeah. that's what you do. If you yeah. got a lemonade stand, you, you wave, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have we have our thing. And then uh, when it's over today, then I'm going to enjoy what Chicago's about. Good. Get some food, some pizza maybe or something or a hot dog. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some pizza or a, or hot, a hot dog. dog. <laughs> a Chicago hot dog, whichever. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kevin Anthony. It was so great to meet you guys. And everyone's got to go see Black or White in theaters. January 30th. You know, I got Thank a friend you, that, yeah. that, that loves this town more than anybody. His name is Aaron Simmel. Yeah. And and Aaron Simmel loves his town so much. He's a movie guy with okay. me. Okay. That he, he's got the subway uh, tattooed. The L. Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. All, you are on kidding. His arm. And I looked at him and he goes, he goes, I don't know, man. I just love this town. So when I'm here, I'm calling Aaron and he's saying, I'm going to fix you up. So, so, so all you friends of Aaron do not let him down when the call comes go out with that guy who has the L tattooed on his arm that's right. a good way to get around he likes, it. Yeah, good. he likes it he's like everybody here that says they're sick and goes to those afternoon games oh right, right. exactly oh yeah those Cubs games you feel and then that coming on that's... see you on WGA and then yeah. your boss sees you around 2 o'clock at Wrigley that's right. happened work. the Wrigley call <laughs> that doesn't work <laughs> The Wrigley cough, yes. That's what it is. Exactly. Well, thank you guys. So nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thank